Hello, good morning. Uh, so great to be here, feeling so good uh, that we are here uh, in this session. I am looking forward to this uh, interview, a series of interviews on uh, going beyond survival. That uh, this uh, interview is uh, inspired uh, looking at the many individuals during this uh, during this uh, lockdown pandemic, many individuals uh, doing things uh, that is helping one another. Uh, so we have Ibu Rose signing in. So good morning, uh, great to see you there. And let me just check uh, who else are around. Uh, ooh, I'm just so excited uh, that we have uh, this session this morning. In a short while, I'll be bringing up our guest for today, uh, Scott Friedman from uh, Golden, Denver, Colorado. So he'll be, uh, I'll be introducing him in a short while. So while we are uh, waiting for the uh, viewers to come in, uh, just to Hi, good morning, Bhavani. Great to see you. Oh, I'm so glad that you're here. So we've got three MAPS people uh, already. You, Rajan is here as well, and also Scott. <laughs> oh, wow, I'm so excited uh, to be uh, interviewing uh, Scott. Uh, so for those of you who are already here this morning, just to mention that, uh, uh, I was inspired to do this uh, uh, series of interviews because noticing how when the pandemic and uh, the lockdown came, many people were uh, badly, adversely affected, including me, uh, of course. And uh, what inspired me was noticing there are so many individuals out there so willing to help coming up with uh, I'm not just talking about online webinars. I'm talking about people who are uh, on the ground helping uh, other people, the frontliners, of course, but there are others doing uh, work to to help other people as well. So I'm uh, inspired by this. I thought that uh, what if we can have something that will allow uh, us to address the issues in a more comprehensive, in a more... Uh, a comprehensive uh, way, uh, taking into account the various aspects of life. So that's how I uh, begin contacting people. And my my <laughs> initial idea was to contact people from as many different uh, backgrounds altogether. Uh, and uh, Scott was mentioning eight people. That's crazy. I said yes. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> and Scott uh, asked me, what were you thinking? I said, I wasn't thinking. <laughs> All that I wanted to do is to gather a group of uh, uh, wonderful individuals who will be uh, willing to, uh, to, 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 to share their expertise in, in the various areas that can help people. Uh, that's the whole. Uh, that's the whole idea of doing this, so that we can notice how this is affecting us in so many different ways, uh, and uh, uh, having people from different uh, different background, then uh, uh, they'll be able to notice the different dimensions that are affecting uh, themselves, and in that way, taking small steps in each of those dimensions to get ourselves. Well, again, so that's basically at the uh, <laughs> at the uh, uh, at the forefront of my mind when I uh, thought about this. So, eight people over eight days. What was I thinking? <laughs> I wasn't thinking, <laughs> but I'm so glad that the people that I've uh, contacted, uh, Scott, uh, uh, Prof. Ma Fauzi tomorrow, then Rajan coming on Friday. Uh, the moment I contacted uh, these people, almost immediately, each and every one of them said, yes, they are on board. And that really touches my heart. It's so uh, so uh, empowering for me uh, to, know, to know that. And it confirmed my, my, uh, uh, my idea. It confirmed 
uh, my thoughts that people are just willing to help. So this is where we are at, how to help others from the various ways of thinking, various dimensions of our uh, life. So now we are at 10 o'clock. Uh, just uh, checking uh, with uh, my admin over here. Uh, are we ready to rock and roll or what? Morning, Scott. Good to see you again. How are you, my friend? Good to see you, Marzuki. <laughs> yeah, so excited to, uh, to, to have you here. Uh, and uh, so as we start this, uh, uh, this uh, interview, uh, this, this will be a, a chit chat, a discussion uh, between uh, friends, uh, just for the benefit of uh, uh, anyone here who, who does not know Scott yet, which uh, I don't know where they are. <laughs> yeah, it's just that uh, the topic for this interview is uh, turn on your GPS. The first, the first thing I, I look at the topic title. I said, "What GPS?" Um, I'm, I referring to Google Maps or Waze, but Scott refers to gratitude, play, and surprise. And that is a just the title itself was a big wow for me. Now, very quickly, just to introduce uh, Scott. Uh, Scott uh, uh, is the former president of the National Speakers Association. Uh, speaking over 60 times a year on employee innovation and engagement, customer experience, and how to create a happier, healthier uh, workplace. Scott is the author of four books, Celebrate Lessons Learned from the World's Most Admired uh, Organization. I've got that book. Uh, a Celebration a Day, 365 Ways to a Happier, Healthier Workplace, Happily Ever After, How to Engage Any Audience, and the fourth book is Using Humor for a Change. And uh, what is also, what really touches my heart is that Scott is the co-founder of Together We Can Change the World. And I hope that by, at the end of the interview, Scott will, will be speaking a little bit about this. Uh, a non-profit foundation focused on anti-trafficking, social business, clean water, and the health and education of less fortunate children and women. Currently, they have over 20 projects in six Southeast Asian countries. Now, personally, to me, Scott is a big-hearted, authentic, and warm person that I feel honored uh, and privileged to call a friend. So again, welcome to the Going Beyond Survival to Long-Term Sustainable Holistic Wealth interview series. So it's a pleasure, uh, Scott, for me to welcome you. Yeah, so if I may start off with the question of, uh, with respect to the topic that you are presenting uh, this morning. So what is the relevance of this topic in the context of the crisis that we are currently facing? You know, there's, there's really no relevance whatsoever. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. <laughs> I just thought for your first interview, I would throw you off for the <laughs> first make you feel comfortable. Uh, actually, there's uh, quite a bit of relevance. Um, the, the last two Celebrate books, Celebrate, the two that you mentioned, Celebrate Lessons Learned from the World's Most Admired Organization and a Celebration a Day. In the books, we define celebration as acknowledging all that is good, uh, the good work that you do, the people that you do it with, the people that you do it for. It's when your to-do list becomes your done list. It's mm acknowledging the good things in your life. And uh, it's, it's really just a, a philosophy about life. It's an attitude. It's the lens through which we see our world. So the relevance is at a, at a time like this, more than really any, any other time, it's so important when, when we have, we all have uncertainty all over the world right now. And, um, and, you know, it's, it seems to, it, to go from fear to uncertainty to panic. To, <laughs> I mean, to, you know, there we, we're all running a, a certain range of emotions. And, and that's why to, to focus on the good in your life and the gifts of your life and to be grateful at a time like this and to really look at, 
at the gifts and making a difference. And so that's really what the, the, the GPS, turning on your GPS is about. So the relevance is that we all have control of our thoughts. Uh, I saw on a tea book, tea box once it says, watch your thoughts for your thoughts become your words. Watch your words for your words become your actions. Watch your actions for your actions become your habits. And watch your habits for your habits become your destiny. So, um, so now it's so important to to watch our, our thoughts um, and, and to you know to really be grateful and to to live in that GPS mentality. So there's your relevance for you. Wow. Wow. So. Uh, I get it when you say that it's not relevant because it's not just during this pandemic. It is a, a life a long way of looking at how we live. Yeah, it, it really is. I mean, it's, it's all about uh, you know, and how we interact with other people. And, you know, I, I, the book is really an employee engagement, customer experience type book. Bo both books are. And... Um, and it's how we treat one another, how we honor one another, how we form relationships, how we build a team. And uh, you know, whether it's our family that we're spending much more time with these days, or whether it's uh, on a Zoom call as we're building relationships with our team and we're learning how to, uh, how to do the, uh, the, the virtual teams and, 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 and form relationships like we are tonight or in your case today. <laughs> um, um, yeah, so it, it's, it's, it's all about people and relationships. Okay, so it's all about people and relationships. So, so was that what uh, was uh, driving you? Because I remember that was nine years ago <laughs> that uh, um, you hosted me in your beautiful home in Golden and, and it was, it was not just about being there in the house. You introduced me to your friends, to Alan in, in, in Boulder, to Joe and Judy in Denver. So was that part of uh, what yeah. you, re you mean about relationships? Yeah, that was a mistake. I should have never done that. <laughs> <laughs> it's done. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, that's the... Uh, you know, I've been a I've been a friend of MAPS, Malaysia Association of Professional Speakers, and my, you know, good buddies for uh, there for for many years, and um, we're all a community. And you know, and and today, more so than ever, we're not only as MAPS and National Speakers Association of America and Asia Professional Speakers of Singapore. I mean, we're all part of the same community. So we open up our our homes and our hearts to each other, but. You know, I find during this time that never before have we felt the interconnectedness we are as a global community. And so it's important to be able to open up our, our homes and our hearts to, to not just our, our normal communities, but uh, you know the, the communities of all of us that are going through the same thing anywhere on this planet right now. And, and uh, when you mentioned that, that really struck uh, in me because uh, one of the things that I have uh, noticed in myself uh, during this uh, uh, pandemic is that I begin to notice that I'm beginning to be more grateful of what uh, I, ha I have before now that I've lost uh, quite a number. Uh, I'm, I'm not able to go into the forest, that kind of thing, it's because since I've lost those, I begin to value, uh, yeah. value that. Uh, and and also, I'm beginning to notice all the uh, people who may appear to be doing mundane things on a day-to-day -day basis. However, beginning to notice how valuable their services are. Yes, I, I think that's as, as we slow down our lives a little bit and we have a chance to reflect, we we appreciate the little details of our lives. And, and I think this is a wonderful time to, to, to immediately go to gratitude. And, and, and I'm, I'm very fortunate that that's my default in life is when something bad happens, it makes me appreciate all the good things in my life. And sometimes it takes something bad or something that's 
you know, not what we're used to or uncomfortable or different or uh, an inconvenience to, um, to make us appreciate, wow, you know what? On a day-to-day -day basis, our life is pretty darn good. We have a, we have a place to live. We, we have food and we still have food. We have people in our lives that we love and that love us. And um, overall, it's a, it's a pretty darn good life. And so hopefully that that's, we take that into account right now that we don't have some of those simple pleasures of life that we have taken for granted before that um, yeah, now that we don't, we don't have them, we, we appreciate them and we'll, we'll really value them and honor them in our lives when we, when we get those things back again. So, yeah, I'm just uh, reading uh, Rajan making comment just now that our lives are really good and it's just, it requires something like this to get us to uh, to appreciate that. Now, uh, on top of that, uh, Scott, you bring humor uh, into things. Uh, so uh, tell, tell me more about this humor that you are bringing in into lives so that you will be able to relieve stress or how does it benefit us in our life in bringing in humor? Well, humor is a, a wonderful way to, to distract from some of the problems or challenges that we have in our lives. And when we're laughing, then we're not feeling stress or fear. Or we're just enjoying the moment and to live in that mm -hmm. present moment and to, to have some fun. Um, about three and a half years ago or so, I started a group called Celebrate at Work, which is really based on the two books. I'm just sharing mm -hmm. ideas, but I've turned that into a more sharing humor really in the last, since this pandemic started, because I think that we all need a release. It just gives us permission to, to laugh again. Um, I had the, uh, the, the tall order of being the very first speaker after the Columbine massacre here in Colorado. I it was already on my calendar to speak to the Jefferson County administrators. And, um, and I followed in that, in that meeting, I, I followed the, uh, they gave awards for the heroes that had handled the Columbine situation well. And there was a lot of tears and it was a very emotional day. And I, and I was supposed to speak that day on humor. And they, uh, they didn't cancel me, and they, they thought everybody needed that release uh, in a very, very tense situation. And uh, I, I remember that day very well. And, and I started my talk, and I said that uh, your job is not to stop mourning, but to stop only mourning. And with your permission, I would like to take time out today and just just enjoy ourselves. Just give our you – know, originally the day was scheduled to – as a celebration to, to laugh together. And so let's, let's honor that. Let's just take an hour of a, a break and, and have some fun and to, and to, and to laugh together. And that permission gave people the, uh, the, the chance to say, okay, I'm, I'm going to just take a break from wherever I'm at in my life and just enjoy the next hour. And that's what humor does. You know, the more we can add humor, I recommend to people to watch you know, watch comedy on Netflix. We've, uh, I've had a, I haven't involved myself in any series on Netflix, but I've been watching. I've watched Seinfeld has a new special out that's very good. Uh, Sebastian Manakavitz, I think is his name, um, is it, hilarious. Ray Romano, I've been watching. Uh, Jim Gaffigan. I mean, it's uh, there's there's nothing like just getting a little bit of humor. But my very first book was a book called Using Humor for a Change. And I introduced uh -huh. the concept of the one-minute humor break. And the, the one-minute humor break is, 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 is basically how we, can, how we can break the emotional state that we're in through humor. So if you look at one definition of humor being pain, embarrassment, or stress distanced mm -hmm. by time. So if you look at okay. what caused the stress six months ago or a year ago, two years ago, hopefully those are the things that we laugh at today. But why do we have to wait? Why can't we have some kind of um, some kind of strategy when we feel the stress creeping up our back and into our shoulders and our neck? You know, when we feel that fear or uncertainty, why can't we change it and, and, and find something funny? Thus born the one-minute humor break. 
So mm -hmm. um, it, it's uh, the, the book is 101 different ideas, and I'll, I'll, I'll share just a few with you tonight. Um, yeah. That, um, that, you know, just to, it's to give us the permission to look at things a little bit, life a little bit more crazy and provide an immediate emotional or emotional attachment is is broken that it are the way that we react to stress our emotional stress pattern changes all right so one example is the uh like a profanity with a twist all right here's how it works you okay. write all of your favorite cuss words swear words on a piece of paper okay okay so <laughs> you may need back then you can <laughs> swear word in number one through 30 31 through 60. Next time something upsets you, instead of screaming out the swear word, you just scream out the number. Three, 13, seven, <laughs> four, 11, your mother, nine, shove a two by four up your eight. <laughs> you immediately release the stress, then people around you start to wonder what those numbers mean. Don't get near Rajan. You know how he is when he screams seven. Trust me, stay away. Just stay away today. <laughs> okay. Right, so that's okay. That's, so that's a crazy, you know, that's a crazy idea. But that, but that, uh -huh. you know, but just the fact that you're writing down swear words, you're not thinking about your troubles, right? But yeah. Another one, another, another one of my favorites is to sing your complaints. So um, maybe around the house or, or, for those, you're going to be going back to work soon. Uh, America's starting to open up, and a lot of folks are going back to work now here. Um, so what if, you know, instead of complaining and, and sharing all the stress, you have a policy where you have to sing your complaints. So maybe sing? We, so, so maybe, we, you know, you do like a children's, a nursery rhyme. A, oh, wow. A kid's song that you learned when you were young. So it would be something like... Uh, I yo, I yo, it's back to work I go, a stressful scene. I'd rather quarantine. I yo, <laughs> I yo, I yo, I yo, I yo. All right, so it's good. You know, it's kind of crazy. Um, but to just to do these little things, break that and, and, emotional stress pattern. And uh how have companies and corporations taken this because you do a lot of work for corporations. So how have they incorporated this into their workplace? Uh, if you uh, can give some example. You know, it's, it's I remember uh, I was speaking to the, 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 the uh, it was a hospital chain in Singapore and a mm -hmm. place that you wouldn't expect this kind of thing to work. Um, and, the, and I, and I remember getting a note saying, Hey, we, uh, we applied the, we wrote down all of our favorite swear words on a piece of paper. And, and now we just go around just for fun, throwing out numbers. And it just become a, you know, a kind of a little ritual, a fun ritual to poke fun at. Um, you know, and honestly, you know, I didn't, um, when I wrote the book, the book is gosh, 20 some years old. And uh, in the last six years, I really focused more on how celebration in the workplace impacts productivity and performance. So I don't really do, uh, I don't really talk that much about the, the, these, the humor break anymore. Okay. But when this okay. pandemic started, it was really uh -huh. interesting. A lot of clients that I had done humor workshops for in the past, uh -huh. I used to have a program called Laugh Lines Impact the Bottom Line. So a lot of my old clients, I, I've been in the business over 30 years now, started calling me, say, hey, can you do a, uh, how to use humor to relieve stress uh, for virtually for our, you know, for our customers and for our, our staff. And so it's come back because it, it really, it's a, it's a, it's a good time for it right now to, to use humor as a strategy, whether it's, whether it's watching comedy, whether, uh, whether to create fun, it says laugh lines impact the borderline. It's actually the bottom line. I just saw that flash a little across the screen. Um, so wh whatever self-effacing humor um, is another good one to be able to learn to laugh at ourselves. Planned spontaneity is is another is another great uh, great example of a, of a strategy that we can implement now. 
So planned spontaneity sounds like an oxymoron, right? Two words that don't <laughs> <Yeah. you>. uh, <laughs> so, but so planned spontaneity, it, it, the the intent behind it is uh -huh. is come to every situation ready to play. All right. So you know when we spend so much time at home with the same person, there's you know, tensions can get can flare up a little bit and they, you know, our, our nerves are are a little what are they, they easy to get on those nerves, right? So if you if you if you look for opportunities to play with words, to 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 have some fun with what people say. I, I remember uh, me and a buddy were watching a speaker. Speaker falls off the stage. My friend mm -hmm. turns to me and says, hey, what would you say right now if you fell off the stage? So I thought about it for a quick minute. And I said, I'd probably say something like, ah, oh, don't mind me. It's, it's just a stage I'm going through. I said, what would you, <laughs> I said, what would you say? He said, I will now take questions from the floor. So if I fall off the stage, I'm going with his. I will now take questions from the floor. So it's, it's looking okay. for opportunities to play. You, you come to work or, you, or you're just in your life, you're, you're thinking of that. Uh, my friend Tim Gard, who I, the story is about Tim, he and I were having that conversation, but he has what's called a comic vision. If you look, if you look through, through the eyes of humor or the eyes of comedy, for um, it makes life a so much easier right now. So you're you ever been to a dinner party and somebody rattles the door when you're in the bathroom to get in? Mm -hmm. Normally you'd say, I'm in here, be out in a minute. Right? Next time try this. Come in. <laughs> <I'm waiting. laughs> you want to spice up a dinner party, that would spice up a dinner party. Right? So it's, so it's plan fun. So it's looking for opportunities to have fun. I'm a uh, I'm notorious if you go to dinner with me and the waiter or waitress comes over and and uh, or they when they deliver the food they'll put the food in whatever I ordered in front of me and I'll look at them and I'll say uh, real seriously I say uh, is it too late to change my order <laughs> just, to, just to be playful just to you know just to add a little bit of levity to the situation okay you know I've grown so up and now is a now is a better time than any to uh, hmm. to institute those humor principles that I've learned over the years, and and that's why I find myself um, doing a lot more of these humor programs at this particular point in time because it really is effective. Yeah, as you are mentioning that, especially in the uh, current situation where people are twenty four seven at home with their small circle of. Uh, uh, family. So uh, this plan, uh, spontane spontaneity, how how would it uh, help people? Because, I mean, you're seeing the same face every day and it can get you, I, I don't know, especially for people who are not used to, to be with their family members 24-7. So how does this help? So, it's, you know, I mean, this the same way, it's, it, because it's, if you're thinking about how you can come up with a funny comeback to something somebody says, then you're you're less likely to get irritated. So you're let's say you only have uh, you know you have one main TV in the in the in the family room, and I, and I guess uh, and maybe your internet connection is not so good, so you can't watch everything on your computer. Let's just say. So uh, hey, can we watch what I want to watch tonight? Sure, we can as long as what you want to watch is what I want to watch. Yeah, then we can. <laughs> You know, you just you get the chance to play a little bit, and and um, yeah. So okay. I mean, but I mean, the, the main thing when you ask that question is 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 look for look for the funny in the situation. You know, look for look for ways to to lighten lighten the situation a little bit. And um, if you if you if you look for humor, humor has a way of finding you. Uh, so, so this is the point uh, that you men uh, mentioned that uh, about to be able to laugh at yourself because the thing about humor is that some people might not find what is funny to you as funny. So can you just uh, uh, explain a little bit more about that because uh, some humor may not go down well with others. 
And, and that's why the uh, self-effacing humor, laughing at yourself is the most important. The highest form of humor is the ability to laugh at yourself. The lowest form of humor is making somebody else a target of the joke. But if you can laugh at yourself, in a sense, what you're saying is that you accept your flaws and your foolishness and your imperfections, and then people can't laugh at you. They have to laugh with you. So if you can laugh at yourself, you will always have something to laugh at. So other people are laughing at you. Why not laugh at yourself? But it, but it's it's yeah to bring the humor back on you to to poke a little bit of fun at yourself. Just let people know that you don't take yourself so serious. That's a great way to to get through these these tough times as well. So um, so in that uh, uh, before I continue on, just to uh, say hello to those who have just joined in, Wendy and Maya uh, coming in, uh, and going back to the point that Rosita mentioned, permission to laugh because you you mentioned about the uh, the. Uh, the speech that you made at Colombian, uh, oh, uh -huh. yeah. Uh, so, so getting people to give them uh, the permission to laugh. So, what gives? Why do people need to give themselves permission to laugh? Well, you know, in the United States, we're getting close to a hundred thousand people that have passed away from this pandemic, and so you know, there's a, a lot of people think that now is. That not a time that, that you know this is not a laughing matter what we're going through. So when when I when I first started doing programs when this pandemic hit when I when I first got back from Asia, um, I, I treated it like like the Columbine situation not not quite as uh, you know, severe, but um, but I did I said hey can we just uh, you know I, wherever you I I, did, I ran a poll about you know what what you're feeling right now and then I said okay as you can see the emotions are all over but. If I can, with your permission, can we just all agree that for the next hour we're going to we're going to give ourselves permission to laugh? So if you're if and some people don't need permission, I, I'm I'm one that I, I know the value of humor. I um, you know I'm I, I I'm sad. I'm I'm empathetic. Um, you know I uh, I lost an uncle that uh, to COVID nineteen um, that that. Pretty sure it was COVID. I mean, it was respiratory. He was in a, a rehabilitation home for a little while, and then and, and um, he, he got it and passed away. And so, I mean, it it, it is a serious issue. But I, I love what Jack Welch said. Jack Welch, uh -huh. he said uh, when he, when he's asked about you know how did he create this amazing learning environment at General Electric, he said he taught his workers to take their work serious, but to take themselves lightly. So I know the power of being able to take ourselves lightly. That doesn't mean we don't take the situation seriously. Mm -hmm. um, we, we can be empathetic. We can be sad. We can, you know, we can mourn a little bit. But, but we're going we're gonna to be much better help to others when we take care of ourselves mentally and emotionally. And that can be with humor. So we can, we can run that balance. But, um, you know, I'm a... I can appreciate spending a, a fair amount of time in, in humor and, and uh, you know, and making sure that I surround myself with people that make me laugh and, and that um, I, I'm watching shows today to, to that, that, that make me laugh so that I can, I can, I can stay in joy. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've been following your Facebook post and uh, you give me a laugh every day. <laughs> I can testify to that. <laughs> now, <laughs> under the current uh, situation, people are uh, under a lot of stress, financial, uh, medical stress and all that. So how can we make our culture more positive? So uh, I know that uh, the, the way that you're doing is you bring injecting humor. So, so what else can we do to make it positive? Well, I've been in a, a mastermind group or with uh, for many years with a lady by the name of Mary Laverty. And, and many years ago, she introduced a concept of the best of the best to me. And I remember we would start off every mastermind meeting. And a mastermind meeting is when six of us speakers would meet for, uh, for a few hours and, and just brainstorm ideas, basically. And uh, the best of the best is it started for her when she was coming back from a trip from, to Disneyland with her family. And when you take a family vacation or holiday, on the way 
on the way there, everybody, all the kids are well behaved. They're excited, but on the way back, they're a little cranky, right? They maybe haven't mm. had enough sleep, and and uh, that's kind of when you run through in your mind which kid you may put up for adoption first. Um, so she <laughs> we created this game called the Best of the Best, where she says, "Hey, what was the what was your favorite ride? The best ride at Disneyland? Your favorite your favorite character? Who was that? Uh, the best meal we had? The the fun the most fun we had at night? The best laugh we had?" as many categories as they, you could come up with for the best of the best. And it was so effective to getting for that ride home that she started that concept around the dinner table at home was they would sit down as a family for dinner after school. And the, um, the first question she would ask her kids is, what's the best thing that happened at school today? Tell me something positive. So she taught her kids to look for what's positive in their lives. And that really helped to create three very well-adjusted, positive kids. And so this, this best of the best, I remember I had the great fortune of serving the National Speakers Association as president in, in 2004, 2005. My favorite game to play was the best of the best, as I would go from country to country in the different chapters, 38 different chapters in the U.S. And, uh, you know, You'd go out to dinner the night before with the board, and maybe I knew half the people there and and um, and didn't know the other half. What a great way to get to know people is by saying, hey, what, what's the most exciting thing going on in your life right now? Uh, because you, it's good for Thanksgiving. It's good for those that have just come, come out of Ramadan, and you're you're celebrating with uh, with family and hopefully friends if uh, – you know, we were talking a little bit about that before that I guess the first night you were able to, but uh, you know, th then it's to immediately go to sharing what's good. What, what, you know, that, that's the whole celebrate mentality is let's talk about what's good. And so it's, it's a great way for, to start off a virtual meeting when you're getting to know each other is, and we do this in our together, we can change the world board meetings, our town halls that we've been doing a little of, you know, let, let's just start the meeting with, let's, sh let's share some good news. Talk about what what exciting things, what gifts have come out of this pandemic, and what what you find is it, it builds the energy. You, you feel much more positive. So anything that you have to deal with that may be negative at that point is um, is, is so much easier to deal with when you um, when you are coming from that place of the best of the best. So it, it's a it's a great way to start in person meetings. It's the great for receptions, for, for just about anything. You know, let's just talk about what's working before we get into possibly what's not working. So around the dinner table, you know, hey, what's the what's the best laugh we've had? What's the greatest gift from this pandemic that we've uh, that we've learned? What's your um, what's your what's your favorite new app, your favorite kind of music? Have you discovered a new song? So you just go category to category to category. And you you make sure that you you know that you you your diet is a is a positive one of 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 good food for thought so to speak. Wow, oh, I I like you using the word uh, diet uh, because uh, what you have just given us is a very specific strategy that we can use in order to have this positive outlook in life. So uh, in your case, so how do you stay happy uh, at this time? Well, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I mean, my default is to go to gratitude. So um, it's not, you know, I, I mean, I obviously like you and so many of us in the speaking business, we lost all of our business and we're kind of reinventing ourselves for the time. And I'm sure that we'll probably never go quite back to where we were. But um, I, I mean, I'm, you, you know, I, I think my greatest gift and gratitude in my life really has been together we can change the world because we we do we have um i, I look at in uh, in malaysia we work with msri the, um the uh they have a refugee school and um mm -hmm. so we work very closely with some refugees there and you look at you know they they come from sudan and somalia and afghanistan and the iran and and uh myanmar the rohingyas uh they come to myanmar and and they're just i mean it's a tough life can you imagine uh you know you're having to run from your country and end up in another country and everything you knew and, and appreciated was taken away from you so when i 
when I think about the life that I have, and and uh, you know, we've been we've been giving a lot of money um, to a lot of different causes in the five countries we serve, including MSRI, to these refugees who, who uh, I mean, they're looking. A lot of them don't know where their next meal's coming from, and um, so immediately I think, wow, my life compared to their life. I mean. It, I, got so many things to be grateful for. So, so that's been a wonderful gift of gratitude for me. Um, but just to appreciate you know, the, the upbringing I've had, the friends I have in my life, I mean, I just always go back to gratitude and to count our blessings. When we count our blessings, we have so many more blessings to count. And the quickest way to get rid of any negative emotion in our lives is to practice gratitude. You can't you can't be upset. You can't be emotional when you're when you're counting your blessings. So um, so that's a it's a wonderful exercise. As soon as you as soon as you get angry or fearful or uncertain, then just start counting your blessings. Um, there's an app called Track Your Happiness. <clears throat> yeah, it was created by a Harvard psychiatrist. She wanted to find out if you go to trackyourhappiness.com or you go to the app store under Track Your Happiness, you'll you can find out how it works. You just wanted to find out when people in life are the most happy. And you can imagine circumstantially how, um, what may cause you to be happy. You know, good music, good food, friends, family, uh, those intimate moments with our spouses are, uh, would, would rate right high right up in the list. But the reason that what he found was it's not, it's not the circumstances that people find themselves in that make them happy. It's how we define our experiences in our lives. Yeah. And I think that you would agree that as we look at how people react to this, that, that things happen the best for the people that make the best out of the things that happen. So it's, 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 it's looking for the gifts. Uh, if we look at our, at our current circumstances in the past through the eyes of fear and resentment, mm -hmm. that shows up as fear and resentment in the future. If we look at the past and present through the eyes of gratitude, then it shows up as hope and faith in the future. So the, so the gratitude brings you towards hope and faith. If if you yeah if you look at right exactly if you look at uh, if if you look through the eyes of gratitude, mm. you're, you know you're and you're thankful and and you look for the gifts and the lessons, then that's hopeful because you you realize that there's. There's a lot of gifts. There's a lot to be grateful for. And if that's where the focus is, then it, t it moves you from uncertainty and fear into, into hope and faith. Uh, and and is that why uh, when, when I, you know, you watch these video clips of refugees and you know that their situation is really dire uh, with no food uh, and all that. And yet there are flashes of happiness and joy in their lives. So... Uh, what gives? I mean, uh, we look at the, the, the kind of stress in terms of the physiological need that are not being met and all that, the fear, the danger, and yet they have these times in their life that they are just joyful. So uh, can you just comment on that? Yeah, and I, would, I would think they spend probably most of their lives or, or a lot of their lives being more more joyful. Um, and part of the reason is, is because they don't have all the all the reasons to be unhappy that we create in our own lives. You know, we we let technology drive us crazy. Well, they don't have that technology to drive them crazy. So a lot of times, a simple life is better. But I like to say that no matter where we are in life, there's someone that has it a lot better that's figured out a way to be miserable, and there's someone that has it a lot worse that's figured out a way to be happy because happiness is an inside job, and it's a you know, a lot of times, I mean, people don't know, they don't know how to compare their lives to others because they just know their own lives. But um, but but sometimes that brings families closer together. I mean, hopefully, you know, families are, are coming closer together. I know there's some, obviously, some tension there from time to time. But, you know, that, again, and it's, and it's how we wire it in our own minds. I mean, if we're, if we're looking for the opportunity to be grateful and we're, and we're, and we count our blessings and we look for the gifts, then we spend a lot more time in joy than we do in sorrow and pain and fear and uncertainty. Hmm. Yeah, um, uh, so, so this is also uh, an area because some people, they uh, live their lives in misery, being miserable, 
And one of the things that cause people to um, feel miserable is because they tend to focus on the mistakes that they have done. They, they have done this mistake and that mistake, and that's why their lives becomes miserable. And in your book, you talk about celebrating mistakes. So uh, tell me more about that. <laughs> that's one of my uh, that's one of my favorite chapters of the celebrate lessons learned from the world's most admired organizations is the organizations around the world that 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 honor mistakes. Uh, you know, Winston Churchill said that uh, success is just moving from failure to failure with enthusiasm. That you never really fail unless you give up. But I, a couple of my favorite examples from the book are one is a is a lady that works for a a sales organization here in the U.S. and uh, she she overslept in a very important sales meeting and uh, she missed a plane and uh, it, it ended up being a pretty bad situation. So that at the next at the next sales meeting, she put a fifty dollar bill on the table and she told what happened and the, and then she and the lesson that she learned from from what happened and then she said, okay. Anybody, I, I want everybody to go around the table, all the, the sales, all the agents, sales agents, and uh, share a mistake that you've made in the last week and the lesson that you've learned. And uh, whoever has made the biggest mistake and learned the greatest lesson, you will be awarded the $50. So they, they started doing this every week. And if you won three weeks in a row, you were fired because <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but but the, the point is, is we learn so much more from our failures than we do from our mistakes. And if, you know, there's too many organizations that they put this fear in you of failing. And, and I think that if, as we establish this new abnormal or this new normal, whatever you want to call it, uh, and, you, you know, we're going to we're going to be figuring this out together. And so the, the leaders that are going to do the best in these situations are the ones that embrace failure and embrace because we're going to learn together. So the more that you can talk about it, the more you can communicate uh, and, and learn the lessons. So I think to have create positive experiences with, is, is so is so critical to uh, to where we are right now. Another one of my my favorite examples that came in for the book was called. Um, it's a, a wine, wine wine and wow Friday, All right? So wine is beverage of choice. So whether it's a, you know, a non-alcoholic beverage or a, your favorite juice, so that's the, you know, in America, for those of us who, you know, I don't know how many organizations would even let you drink, but uh, if you work in a small business, maybe on a Friday afternoon at 3 p.m., who knows? But so, but beverage of choice, whether it's alcoholic or non-alcoholic, okay? That's, a, so that's something to celebrate with, you know, Sparkling non-alcoholic champagne is perfect, uh, or whatever. Okay, so then and then the then the, the the next wine is okay. Let's talk about a mistake that we made. Let's talk about a lesson that we learned this week. All right, so it's a it's a chance to to talk about really anything you want to talk about. You know, and some bosses that you know, get so busy that you can't talk to them, or that they they're so reactive when they 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 you know they they just can't take the criticism when it's even not criticism maybe it's just feedback but they take it as criticism so now's the time that you can talk about anything and you got to be open about it and let's just learn the lessons and then the wow so it's wine wine wow or just wine wow uh, and the wow is let's share something good before the weekend's over let's let's share a win that we had a best of the best let's celebrate something good let's acknowledge what has worked around here so uh it's it's a great little ritual to celebrate the good things and to learn from the things that don't go so well. And with that ritual, what what's happening is that you are closing the week on a high because the wine, wine, uh, wow, you're closing the week with a wow. So that gets people into a very positive state uh, as they go for the weekend. Yeah, and you're clearing the air too. That's the you, two things there really. You you clear the air, and then you and then you celebrate. So you're in on a high note after you clear the air. If something needs to be cleared, so yeah, right. It serves that purpose, and it's a great purpose to serve.
and and that is very important because just thinking positively without clearing the air becomes uh, to a certain extent artificial uh, so when you clear the air you are acknowledging the mistakes that you have made and that is done and over with and now let's think positively so that's a very powerful uh, tool that you have shared here yeah that, that's one that has seemed to resonate with the organizations that i work with that have adopted in some way that the, the best of the best, but then the, the why and the wow. So it's celebrate mistakes. So would this and uh, what other strategies that can can companies make in order to innovate themselves? Because you know there are there are companies where everybody uh, has to be serious looking and not allowed to smile uh, and all that. So uh, what other strategies that you can bring to that to innovate out of that? Well, the, the, the wine wow strategy is, is nice because it gives people permission to, you know, take some intelligent risks along the way. So, so that's, that's one good strategy. And another is, a, as we were doing some research, one of the organizations here in Colorado actually is an organization by the name of Design, Design Force. And mm -hmm. um, what they do is every Tuesday for lunch, the the company will provide a few heads of lettuce and then everybody brings in one or two ingredients that they would like on their salad, on their, on their, on their lunch salad. Um, you know, you can bring in a little bit of chicken if you want or tomatoes or avocados or whatever. So basically it's a smorgasbord, a, a, a just a real buffet of, of, a, of a nice lunch. And they know that um, from the week before, that they have to come up with some idea that will either add value to the employee experience or the customer experience. So it would be, you would look for, maybe it's a, it's a movie that you saw or a book that you read or the way that you interacted with your favorite brand. You know, maybe it was, you had to return something at Amazon and, and you realize, wow, that, that experience is amazing how easy it is to return something at Amazon. So what can I learn from that experience that I can add value to, to our customers or our employees? So if you have, if there's eight people around the table and everybody has to come up with one, it's amazing how, how many different ideas over time that you're going to have that you can implement. And especially, it's it's so important right now as we get back to work, and you know it's a it's a it's a new way of selling. I mean, we 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 need to be much more compassionate. We need to be more much more consultative to find out what where people are at and what their needs really are at this time. And so it's a great way to innovate together by having those conversations, and then everybody has a chance to to be part of that. That they they feel like they have ownership in 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 not only the uh, in the decisions that are made and, and and moving forward as a as an organization, but they feel ownership in the company as well. So two things that I picked up from what you mentioned is about being compassionate and con, uh, consultative uh, in the organization. So that will help them to innovate out uh, of that. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, so. I mean, I think, yeah, empathetic and compassion. I mean, so we can't go back to our old ways. I mean, we, you know, we, you know, part of the, when we talk about the GPS, gratitude, mm -hmm. play, surprise, the, the, the surprise, if we can just go there for a moment, because I think it, it relates to what you're talking about. The, the surprise really is, is the element of the unexpected. It's giving people what's highest on their joy list. So in order to figure out what intrinsically motivates other people, we can't be so focused inward. We have to, we have to pay more attention. We have to ask good questions. We, we, have, to, we have to really be less self-absorbed and more selfless, more compassionate in our approach to people. And so then that, that's when surprise works, is to, is to give people more of what they want in a clever way. It's, it's catching people doing a good job and then rewarding them cleverly. Uh, so so that's, what, that's what surprise is all about. And so surprise even takes on a, a, a more important role as we move forward because 
is a is a big piece of that is we we need to find out where people are at. We need to check in. We need to find out you know what their beliefs, what their values, how they how they're dealing with everything right now, and then based give based on that, then we know better about how we can handle and how we can reward them and make them feel better for for the good work that they do. Yeah. So it's all about going back to basic human relationship, understanding the other person so that we can respond according to the way that the other person uh, looks at their lives. Yeah. 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 Right. It's the old golden rule, do under other, well, more of the platinum rule, do yeah. unto others as they want to be done unto. You know, so learning enough about them so that we can give them more of what they want in their lives. I and mean, that's really the, you know, you want to be emotionally intelligent and truly be compassionate and empathetic. And we have to learn more about those that we, that we're dealing with. Okay. I've been holding on to this, uh, uh, this question because you've mentioned about uh, the project that you're doing together. We can change the world. Uh, and uh, I, I have so many things that I've been thinking about that uh, particular project. Given COVID-19, so what is happening with the Together We Can Change the World and what are your future plans about it? Maybe you can start off by uh, giving us a little bit more understanding what that is about and how it is uh, uh, in the current situation. So the Together We Can Change the World started in 2008. My co-founder, Janice Stanfield, and I had both been doing a fair amount of work in Asia. I started in 1999, so I've been coming over to Asia for about 21 years now. And it just came back uh, some that, as a way to give back. We both had uh, some experiences in, in Cambodia uh, where we were really touched by the people and their history. And we thought, you know, we, we just we need to we, we need to start an organization. So the first trip, we, we, we thought, you know, let's invite five of our friends with us. So our first trip we had in 2008 in Malaysia was one of our countries. Uh, we, we, did, uh, we did business seminars in, in three different countries to raise money and awareness for, for some of the causes that we were, at that time we, you know, we, we just asked around and we found some good causes that we thought were, you know, we wanted to support. Um, and, and it was so impactful and it was such a, a great model of, you know, what a nice way to, to bring our friends over to Asia and, and give them a chance to speak while at the same time introducing the business community to, to some of the causes that weren't, weren't raising a lot of money that really needed the support. And our, our mission is to educate and empower and look after the well-being of less fortunate children and women. So then, the, uh, so then we started doing these two tours a year. Uh, we got some sponsors. Uh, we, we do some hotel training and trade outs along the way uh, and to raise money. So every speaker that comes on one of these tours pays their own way to come. And then they have to do at least a, a fundraiser for up to fifteen hundred U.S. dollars, at least 50, I'm not up to at least fifteen hundred dollars. Uh, th and that money goes to the causes that we serve along the way. And then all the money that we raise from these business leadership conferences also, that that money goes to uh, to to the um, to the causes in that country that we serve. So, so this July was actually I, I was more excited about this tour than I think I have been about, about any of them because we had eighteen. There was eighteen coming, and uh, more. We attract uh, the speakers that really want to move from success to significance in their lives. So we we attract a lot of the certified speaking professional types, but. But, but this particular trip, we I think almost all of us were certified speaking professionals or Hall of Fame members or uh, global speaking fellows. And so a really good group. And unfortunately, we just, you know, recently we had to cancel our trip for July. And so now we're recreating it. And, and that's the, the nice thing about being where we are right now is, is we have a chance to basically have a blank canvas to reinvent ourselves, to throw paint on that blank canvas and create a, a masterpiece. So we're, we're looking at, you know, how we can, how we can do a virtual conference. And, you know, now instead of just bring, bringing, like we were in Malaysia last year at, uh, at the uh, Setia convention center, we had close to 500, 490 people showed up at that, uh, at Setia for our program. But, but instead of, Having a program in, in, in Kuala Lumpur, we can uh, 
we can now open that up to anybody in the world can attend, kind of like on, on tonight. Who knows where we have people from, right? Um, and, and so we're, we're looking at doing a program called Bounce Forward. Bounce Forward. Yeah, better, smarter, stronger. And, and we're looking for celebrities, world leader types, uh, just some very well-known people that have had setbacks and, and how they bounce, bounce forward and the lessons that they've learned along the way and the lessons that we we can learn as we recreate, we reinvent, we reimagine what our own future and the future of our organizations can look like. So, um, yeah, so we're, we're excited. We're, we're just in the beginning stages, but uh, we're, uh, we're talking to a lot of some folks that you would recognize that, um, and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll, we'll have a, a, a very, uh, very, what's the right word uh, just a you know so, so a, a group of you know very esteemed professionals and celebrity types that uh, have learned and want to share their their brilliance with us and uh, raise some money for some good causes yeah I, i'm i'm inspired by uh by what you're doing and many people are do, uh, uh, are doing whatever that they can in the areas that interest them because uh as i'm uh, observing the social economic situation of societies today that uh, people talk about the gap between the rich and the poor and uh, the rich becoming richer and the poor becoming poorer and noticing that uh, that gap I'm also noticing that amongst the people who are rich who are wealthy there are so many individuals who are ready and willing to help. And so, so this is where, how I see your uh, together we can change the world is tapping into that because uh, there are people who are wealthy and rich and they become wealthy and rich because of their wealth habits. Uh, and, uh, and, and they feel because probably many of them also came from an uh, impoverished background and they feel for the people who are less fortunate. And I'm also noticing when this COVID-19 hit, I'm noticing that quite a number of these individuals are wanting to help. So, so that's what I'm uh, yeah, being... That's one, of the, one of the gifts that's coming out of this is you really see people come together and want to help one another. And, uh, and talking about wealth, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing uh, one of your speakers on Wednesday, Rajan, who I know is on the call because he's been chatting in the chat box. Thank you for all the good summaries here, but uh, to talk about how to make money and how to keep money. And, and, and Rajan, of course, is a very compassionate himself and comes from the right place and is a supporter of ours as well. And together we can change the world. And a, a good buddy from MAPS from many years ago, I met him when I first came over to uh, started working with MAPS. So looking forward to that. So yeah, I'm also looking forward to that because uh, because uh, uh, one of the primary reasons uh, uh, I'm having Rajan on Friday is is because uh, people right. who are currently uh, not wealthy or being badly affected by uh, uh, by this pandemic is that it is uh, because these people are not lazy. These people are. Uh, it's just that they have not learned the skills. They have not learned the strategies. So that's also part of what I uh, I have in mind, that when people uh, are able to learn the strategies of wealth, and for me, what you have covered today is the wealth strategy for mental and emotional health. So, and, uh, and if people don't know this strategy of how to use humor, how to, how to look on the bright side of things, then the mental and emotional health will suffer uh, in a sense. It's just that people need to learn. And so that's probably the reason why I'm having uh, this series so that we can, we, we can, uh, uh, we can approach uh, people, we can get them to be exposed to, uh, there are other strategies that we can learn to make ourselves better in this situation. So, yeah, well, I'm I'm impressed that you're uh, doing this eight nights in a row, and I, I think it's a you know wonderful thing to do. And and um, I commend you for wanting reaching out and helping folks. So thank you, and thanks for thank you, thanks for having me kick it off. 
<laughs> so uh, I'm just uh, looking at the comments that the uh, participants are uh, putting in. So looking if there are any questions. Uh, we've come uh, to about the end of the session. So if there are any questions that you may want to ask, just uh, put into the comments and we'll uh, take the questions uh, from there. Uh, while uh, waiting for the questions, uh, just to uh, check with you, uh, Scott, with respect to what it is that you're doing, uh, how can people know more about what you're doing? Uh, uh, because uh, I, I do believe that there are people who will want to be able to uh, be together with you or uh, gain uh, some of your expertise from there. So how can they do that? We have a Facebook page at Together We Can Change the World. So it's a Together, comma, We Can Change the World at Facebook. Our website is twcctw.org, which is Together We Can Change the World.org, the first letter of each word. Uh, personally, Scott at scottfriedman.net, you can find me. And uh, I have, I mentioned we, we talked a little, little about uh, the group I have at Facebook called Celebrate at Work. So if you just go to Facebook and put in Celebrate at Work, I would love you to join my Facebook group. We share some humor and some good ideas, a little inspiration every day. Um, so yeah, good way to laugh and, uh, and make sure that you keep focused on, on the positive. Okay, so... Uh, One other thing question. I want to... I, I told yes. you, and anybody who would like a copy of either celebrate lessons learned from the world's most admired organizations or a celebration a day, 365 ways to a happier, healthier workplace or happily ever laughter, how to engage any audience. If you send me a note at scott at scottfriedman.net, uh, I'm happy to send you the electronic version of any of those three books just for uh, being on the inaugural session of, uh, of, the, of this the program series, so. So uh, thank you, Smaya. She mentioned that uh, asking if she can share these videos to friends. Uh, yes, uh, we are recording this and I will uh, also post it on YouTube so that you can share it to others. Now I'm going to a question coming from uh, Rajan. Uh, Scott, if you're ready to... <laughs> the question coming from Rajan is, Scott, given the current leadership vacuum in the US, how are regular Americans taking charge of the narrative around this pandemic to help the world? Is there an easier question to start the questions off with? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, that's a that's a loaded question. I, you know, uh, unfortunately, I, I'm I'm very sorry to say that I do not think that uh, America is leading uh, in the and how to deal with this pandemic. Um, as a country, I, th I, I think we're more divided than we've ever been before on, on, uh, on how to deal with this pandemic. It's, it's gotten political. Um, you know, there's a, those that want to reopen and they don't care about infecting others while, while others are much more cautious. And um, yeah, so the narrative, the narrative's all over the place, depending on who you talk to. Um, yeah, it's, a. Uh, I wish I could be a little bit more optimistic, uh, cause we're right in the middle of this thing in America and, you know, we, uh, Georgia opened up quickly and Alabama did and their, uh, cases as of today are way up in those two places. And, um, so we're, we're not learning any great lessons ourselves right now. And, um, I think we need to look to the rest of the world and how they're dealing with it. And I, I think that um, you know you have been very diligent in Malaysia about how you've dealt with it, and the lockdown is painful as it is. And you know, I mean, I think it's going to pay the dividends that you, when you reopen, you're not going to have to close, or you're not going to see cases skyrocket right now. Um, but I mean, I think that the the lesson that if I had to share a lesson that we can all learn right now is is just to you know be be considerate of you know it's we're, we're interconnected here and. And you know, we should all wear masks when we're in public places. We should, uh, you know, if we have any conditions that 
any chance that we may have this that, to stay home, to get tested, um, and to do our part to 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 make it easier on our fellow man, so that we can, as a as a as a global community, we can help solve this thing together. Um, you know, and and, and just take personal responsibility for social distancing, wear a mask, and 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 getting the word out what what needs to be done as as we rebuild as a as a global community. So, wish I had a better answer for you, Rajan. <laughs> I know we've talked about this a little bit uh, amongst ourselves. Thank you for that because uh, you are mentioning global community, the need for us to be considerate, to be compassionate, to be empathetic. Uh, that is the way forward because uh, no nation is an island. We are all together in one globe. Yeah. So I'm moving to the question from yeah. Marilyn there. Uh, real uh, quick, I'm just, I, I'm just yes. reading a, a message from, from Rajan. He says, perhaps each country needs to exercise humility so that we can learn from each other. I, I think that's a great statement. I mean, I, mm. Unfortunately, we do not have a leader that has much humility or any humility at all. And I think really... We just need, you know, we don't have to. We, we're, we're all trying to figure this out together, and we're, you know, we may not be right all the time. So we just need to admit when we're wrong and learn together. And I think that's wonderful advice. Thank you, Rajan, for let's all exercise a little humility at this time. Yeah. Uh, that that uh, when when you mentioned that, uh, I recall uh, an uh, uh, interview give. Uh, uh, a statement given by, I, I, I don't know whether I pronounce his name right, the governor of New York, uh, Cuomo. Yeah, he, he Cuomo. He, yeah, he mentioned that we've got it all wrong uh, in the sense that accepting the responsibility that some of the uh, the, the strategies that he's employed was wrong, the, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, information that they get from the analysts uh, uh, are not uh, totally right. But the, the, the point that, uh, uh, Scott, you mentioned that we need to figure it out because nobody knows the uh, exactly what it is. So it's about having that humility uh, that when I take an initiative and that didn't turn out right, to be able uh, to, be, to say that, hey, I got it wrong at that time. So let's work out. Uh, better for the next one, and uh, and I, uh, I was just reading that uh, on the news this morning before we started. Yeah, to be able to have that leadership, to, to be able to say yeah. that hey, I figured something's wrong. So, yeah. moving away from that. Yeah. So, uh, just to move to a question from Marilyn, there, uh, how are you able to change from an irritable state to a humorous one? in an instant in order to insert humor into a situation. Well, we, we talked a little about, you know, the quickest way to change any negative emotion is to practice gratitude. So to, to change your thoughts from, from being irritated to, okay, so, you know, so I'm irritated, but now what am I also grateful for? Or if there was a gift in this situation, what would that, what would that gift be? Uh, so that that would that changes it emo the, the your emotional state. So that's uh changes you from being irritable possibly to, to gratitude or to being thankful and and more joyous. The, the, the humor thing is, you know, that's that's a little bit more training your mind to look for the the comedic value. To we talked about the one minute humor break. It's you know as soon as you feel that stress creeping up your back or shoulders or you you find yourself irritable. You know, what can we do? I mentioned a few examples, um, you know, the, the song or the, you know, to, what, what if you, um, one I didn't mention that's in the book is to celebrate or the first stress of the day or, you know, laugh at the first stress of the day. So you look for opportunities when you're irritable to celebrate those moments. And just the mm -hmm. fact that you're celebrating those moments or to pick up the phone and call your 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 home phone from your mobile phone or your mobile phone to your mobile phone and 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 relieve the stress there you know hi scott this is scott if you're like me and i know i am you're not having a very good day uh some man coughed on the last head of lettuce at the supermarket and uh, my wife cut my 
my hair with garden shears and now I look like uh, some weed gone wild and uh, some lady said she wouldn't touch me with a 10 foot pole. Oh, the story of my life. Uh, oh, no, my self esteem is so low that even my imaginary friend won't play with me anymore. No need to call me back. I'll just see you when you get home. Do me a favor, clean up the place a little, will you? All right, I, I love you. Bye. So it's, it's just doing something, just something extreme. I mean, look at look for ways to to do a, to to break that emotional pattern that, that we we find ourselves in, and it and it doesn't matter what the strategy is as long as you're doing something. All right. So you we need to take responsibility for when we get irritated, and gratitude's a wonderful way to to change that emotional state and looking for the humor, taking the one minute humor break is another one. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. I can <laughs> stop myself laughing as you do that. <laughs> I've got uh, 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 my, my eldest granddaughter. She's very, uh, she has a humorous take on almost anything uh, uh, in life to the extent that when uh, one day I just blurt it out, I ask a grasshopper, uh, are all the bones in your body uh, humorous bones, funny bones? And with a straight face, she looked at me, no. And I was stunned and I asked her, so which one is not the funny bone? My sternum. And I, <laughs> like where'd that come from <laughs> yeah and she was about what four or five at that time and i went i really went where did that come from and uh, as what you're saying is just just go and find the funny way of looking at things because when we look at a different perspective then we can find the, uh, a funny way and you mentioned about this uh, earlier that uh, for most people, even though uh, they have gone through uh, a crisis in life, but time allows them to take a different outlook to what happened. Uh, it's just that we don't really need that time. As uh, you mentioned, uh, when we are able to approach things from uh, joy, from gratitude, as what uh, Hashim mentioned that joy and gratitude, then we don't require time to be able to look at the funny side of that situation coming in from gratitude and joy. Yeah. <laughs> she must be, a, well, yeah, she must be a joy to be around, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, and, uh, frankly, I've learned so much from her uh, with respect to looking at things from the uh, humorous, uh, humorous perspective. She tends to look at things from humor. Uh, almost automatically in many different situations. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, okay. now, let me just... for a long time, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let me take this uh, question from Siti Maheran. I, uh, we are coming to a close now. How can we invite stressed out serious leaders to engage in GPS? So, you know, it's, it's, it's so tough sometimes when, uh, when we're dealing with leaders that that uh, just don't see the humor in situations that don't live from a place of gratitude, so we, we need to take baby steps. And I think the uh, the best of the best may be one of the one of the easiest rituals to get buy-in from a serious, stressed-out leader. Uh, and you know, to show some statistics from what it sharing positivity in the workplace and, and how workers are more productive um you know, just say hey can we just you know can we just start off by sharing a just a few positive things when we start a meeting and then i think that they they would see that the the reaction that the, the positive energy that is generated and you, you hope so over time if, if you can just build in a few different rituals positive rituals and um I'm happy to share, as I mentioned before, the there's a lot that the celebration a day has 365 different ideas on uh, really how to that fall into gratitude player surprise and what you can do in the workplace. So um, I think there's some good ideas, but I, but the the less threatening ones are the ones that they may be open to, and then of course if you can tie it to results or the bottom line through studies or um, then then that may be a way to get buy-in from 
from a stressed out serious leader. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Scott. Uh, I really enjoyed this session. I've learned so much. I've taken uh, lots and lots of uh, notes uh, uh, for myself. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if that's the same with the participants who uh, are viewing it. Uh, and uh, before we end, I would just like to mention my sincere appreciation again uh, to you for being so uh, open, so gracious and uh, so ready uh, to assist us in this uh, current situation. What, will, what I will be doing is that uh, this video, uh, as uh, we record it, I'll be posting it on YouTube and will also be uh, 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 posted in my Facebook page so that uh, if you want to share it, uh, by all means, I would like to uh, encourage you to share it with others because uh, I believe that we all need this outlook uh, in order for us to move uh, forward, not to be bogged down with the current uh, crisis. So uh, before we end, uh, just to mention that uh, tomorrow we have uh, another uh, speaker and this is from uh, the medical uh, uh, dimension. Uh, tomorrow we'll have uh, Professor Dr. Uh, professor Datuk Dr. Mafauzi Muhammad, the Professor of Medicine and Senior Consultant Endocrinologist. Uh, he'll be speaking uh, from the perspective of preventing heart attack, stroke and diabetes. And uh, probably why he's chosen this topic is that uh, this COVID-19 is affecting as, uh, people who are 60 and above, and that includes me, <laughs> are at greater risk uh, because of uh, our pre-existing uh, uh, weaknesses. So, so probably that's the, uh, I would say, the relevance of what he will be uh, speaking about. So that session will be coming in at about uh, 11 uh, in the morning tomorrow. So I hope to see you uh, there again. So, uh, uh, Wendy, uh, what I will do is that I will also take that uh, request how to get the ebook again uh, i will also share uh, the link that you can go to in order to get uh, the resources that yeah. uh, scott has available yeah, yeah i'll send to you and then you can pass it on as well and then and wendy i know where to get a i know where to get a hold of you so i'll, uh, <laughs> I'll send you the books okay good so again scott Thank you very much. Uh, I really appreciate. I'm so grateful that uh, you uh, you are here today, uh, bringing me uh, a lot of joy, uh, a lot of hope uh, for the future. And uh, I hope that it does the same uh, to the viewers here. So thank you. And I look forward to meeting you again, Scott. So with that, Hopefully. thank you very much. Hopefully soon. Yeah. <laughs> so Hopefully much. soon. It's been a pleasure being on. Thanks. Bye-bye. Right.